Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, everybody who subscribed. Um, you know, the, the feedback has been really positive so far, so um, way more than I ever expected. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for telling your friends. Um, what else can I say? Uh, so I got a lot of questions after the first video and um, I was trying to respond to everybody, but I figured I would just kind of do a video and respond to some of the more commonly asked questions or frequently asked questions. So just want to take a couple minutes and do that right now. Um, so going to the first question, uh, somebody asked, wow, lots of high-end tools, Festool, Grizzly, etc. Is that your shop or do you rent time somewhere? I had a lot of questions asking about my shop. Um, I'll probably go ahead and do a shop tour sometime in the future, but just to give you a little background, um, it's at my house, it's my garage. I live in Southern California um, where pretty much everybody has a two-car garage, at least where I live. I'm actually able to still fit a car in here, surprisingly. Everything's on wheels except for my uh, my table saw and my workbench. A little bit of background, so when I, after I got into woodworking, I took a couple classes at a community college just to kind of get the hang of everything. And then once I decided it was something that I wanted to do, I went ahead and converted my garage into a workshop. Um, I probably started off with about a $10,000 investment or so and bought some of the pieces that I thought were um, what I needed to start. And yeah, I was right to some extent, but I think there were a few things that I'd probably do different the second time around. Uh, again, I can go into that more when I do a shop tour, but since then I've kind of continually expanded. This has been over the course of, you know, four or five years now. Um, usually whenever I would build a, a commission piece, I would kind of, as a little treat to myself for the extra work, just buy something like the, you know, the, the fest tool, the domino or something like that, you know, something that I didn't need necessarily, but I knew it would make life easier and I thought it was cool and it was just kind of, you know, treat myself. And what kind of finish do you use? Um, so I use a product called, I believe it's called Hard Oil Number no. 9. It's from a company called BioShield and they're in uh, the UK, I believe, and I'll put a link to that in the description. It's not like a polyurethane or anything like that. It's just uh, oil. From For everything that I keep at my house, that's as far as I go with it. Sometimes for customers, I'll put a polyurethane on just depending on what the piece is and what the application is. Um, but everything that I've had, you know, I've had pieces that that's all they have on it. It's been several years and the finish still holds up really well. Uh, a lot of people were commenting on the narration, some positive, some negative. Um, all were saying that it felt scripted and some liked that because they felt it was like reading something or it was relaxing. And other people thought that I came off as fake. Um, I just wanna say that actually none of that was scripted. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Um, yeah, that was all pretty much just off the top of my head when I was recording that. Um, I've never done anything scripted. Um, uh, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, that's it. What were those orange pucks that the wood is sitting on? Um, those are called bench cookies. Uh, again, I'll put a link in the description. I think you can find them at like Home Depot and Lowe's, um, definitely on Amazon. Uh, they're pretty much, I just use them to sand on top of so that I'm not scratching up the opposite side while I'm sanding the one surface. Um, I also use, use them to finish things on or sometimes to set things on for, you know, if it's got to go on the ground or a surface that isn't, I don't trust, uh, yeah. Lots of people commented on the music. One person in particular, I thought this comment was really funny. They said, the music sounds like Brian Eno's music for airports with guitar instead of piano. So that's really funny that that person pointed that out because that was actually kind of the inspiration for the music. Um, I just wanted something that was very background. Um, I've always loved that Brian Eno song, you know, for the past couple of years. I remember the first time that I heard it actually thinking like, oh wow, this would be, awesome to have like a, a how it's made video that went to this song instead of like, you know, the industrial sounding kind of stuff that they always have in there. Um, so when I edited the video together initially, I didn't have any music. So I actually used the Brian Eno song as like the placeholder to edit everything together to kind of get the pacing right. And then I recorded, me and my friend recorded music afterwards. And we really tried to not mimic it, but just get that same feeling. So I'll go ahead and play some of the music back to back right now. And you can hear that it's very similar in, in the, uh, the feeling or the tone of it, but there's nothing really, I guess maybe some of the keyboard sounds might be similar, but melody wise, there's nothing that's really the same. But I think that's really awesome that somebody was led to that because I mean, it just, it makes me feel like, oh, cool, I, I got the tone that I was going for.
Let's see, somebody says, nice bench and awesome video, really watchable if that's a thing. So I looked it up and watchable actually is a thing, but it turns out that it means moderately enjoyable. You son of a bitch. Just joking. This guy's like a young, much less manly Ron Swanson. Um, I don't know who Ron Swanson is, so I don't know if I should be offended or, or take that as a compliment, but one second. Like five minutes, I'll be done. Anyway, like I was saying, um, I guess I'll take that as a compliment. I'm not sure who Ron Swanson is, but. In all seriousness, um, like I said, the, the support so far has been overwhelming and really more than I ever expected. So thank you guys so much again for subscribing. Thank you for telling your friends and for sharing the video. Um, I'm gonna keep making them. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna continue to kind of find out exactly what I'm doing as I go along. I'll be honest, I, I haven't done anything like this before. So when I went out there to make this first one, I just kind of filmed everything and figured that I would figure it out in the editing process. And, you know, a lot of times when I've done things in the past, I've been afraid to put myself out there. I always wanted a perfect product to put out there, but I know that I'm not gonna ever get a perfect product. And at some point you just have to say, you know what, this is good enough. I'm gonna put it out there and I'm gonna continue to refine as I go. And, you know, I, I, I was pretty pleased with the way that the first one came out. There's some things that I would like to do differently and um, some things that I will do differently in the future, but it's been really encouraging and, and really motivating um, the response that I've gotten so far. And so seriously, thank you guys so much um, for all the feedback, positive, and you know, even some of the negative feedback that I got was really constructive. And I appreciate that kind of constructive criticism that I got. And in fact, I, I'd like to share one, uh, one negative comment that I got that was, I thought was very constructive. Um, so yeah, this, this guy says, here, I'll just read it for you real quick. Holy sh that was awesome, but combined with a terrible video. Good God, that was insufferable. I get the theme you were trying to emulate, but it doesn't work in a 15 minute video pace like that. Holy f Again, I mean, it's just so encouraging. Thank you.